Hello, this is the IOSH No Time to Lose campaign presentation on occupational skin cancer focusing on solar radiation exposure. So, there has been some new IOSH research on work-related sun exposure in Britain um, done by Imperial College London on behalf of IOSH. And this research has shown that skin cancer kills 60 workers a year in this country and that there are 1,500 new cases of non-melanoma skin cancer and 240 new cases of malignant melanoma linked to solar radiation exposure through work each year. The majority of people affected are men and around 40% of malignant melanoma cases involve construction workers. A second piece of research funded by IOSH, done by Nottingham University, looked at the awareness of solar radiation and found that it's generally poorly understood, especially in the construction industry. And 59% of construction workers reported having sunburn at least once in the last year. And it has been shown that just getting sunburn once every two years can triple the risk of getting a melanoma and 40% of workers thought there was no need to wear sunscreen on a cloudy day yet 80% of the UV can get through clouds. Both workers and managers didn't see sun safety as an important issue because of the misperception of the UK climate not being sunny enough to be a risk. So. Solar radiation, it's composed of many different um, wavelengths. It's composed of ultraviolet, visible and infrared. And the main cause of um, sunburn and skin cancer is exposure to the ultraviolet radiation. Unlike visible light, UV isn't just composed of one type of wavelength. It's actually composed of UVA, UVB and UVC. <clears throat> UVC is the most harmful form of UV light but fortunately that is stopped by the upper atmosphere and it is UVB and UVA that penetrate down to the um, Earth's surface and that are the, that's the UV that gives us sunburn and skin cancer. You can't feel the exposure to the UV and the warmth that you feel on a sunny day is actually the infrared radiation that gives the warmth. So, <clears throat> UVA and UVB rays. UVA penetrates the skin deeper into the dermis and here it can cause damage to the cells in the skin and give rise to skin cancer. And it also damages the cells of the dermis, causing premature aging. However, UVB, which only penetrates the epidermis layer, the upper layer of the skin, actually can cause more damage to the DNA in that skin layer and potentially gives rise to more skin cancer than UVA. However, exposure to both do cause problems and generate skin cancer after prolonged exposure. So this is the sort of science bit. This is where the UV comes in to the cell and it damages the DNA in those cells. It causes the bond, the chemical bonds in the DNA to break up. These bonds are then repaired by the cell but they're not perfect repairs and these lead to mutations which are then duplicated each time a cell divides. So these mutations accumulate in the skin each time there is UV exposure and damage. So there's a cumulative effect that the more UV exposure a person has, the more sunburn they have, the greater the chances are that they will develop skin cancer at some stage. Here are some images of different types of UV damage. The close-up of the blister is typical of UVB 
overexposure where the epidermis has been damaged and the swelling and blistering. This is indicative that damage has occurred, that DNA in these cells has been damaged and mutated. The picture on the right is of premature aging caused by e over UVA exposure. A UV index has been generated internationally to help people understand the extent of UV exposure. In the UK, um, this is published daily by the Met Office and can be found on their web page. The index ranges from 1 to 11 and 1 and 2 are considered low levels and it is reasonably safe for people to be outside for prolonged periods of time. Three to five are moderate levels of UV exposure and people should take care during the midday, during the solar noon and to actually um, cover up during the exposure at noon. And six to seven uh, on the index is considered to be a high exposure and people there should look for shade during midday hours, cover up and wear sunscreen. Very high levels are in the range of 8 to 10 and people should spend time in the shade between 10 and 3 p.m. which is when the sun is at its highest and the UV levels are again at the highest. People should cover up and use sunscreen. The index 11 is an extreme exposure and potentially unlikely in this country. There's also the Fitzpatrick scale uh, to help people identify their susceptibility to solar radiation. The scale ranges um, from one, uh, which is ivory, very pale skin, and usually people with red hair, um, through to six, which is very dark brown skin. And the people with ivory, or Fitzpatrick scale one, um, are very susceptible to sunburn and should avoid UV exposure because they are at a higher risk of developing skin cancer. This range goes from beige, light brown, medium brown, dark brown to the very dark brown. People with very dark brown skin have naturally a high amount of melanin which gives them more natural protection against UV exposure. These people are more unlikely to develop skin cancer. However, when the exposure to UV is high or extremely high, they too should actually cover up, seek shade and use sunscreen because they still can burn and develop skin cancer. So people affected at work are usually outdoor workers. Um, so that's those in the construction, agriculture, public administration and defence, land transport and ground staff. Office staff receive 10% of the exposure that outdoor workers expo are exposed to. And in the UK, there are about 5 million people who work outside. So, preventative actions um, that can be taken are listed here. And 90% of all skin cancer deaths could be prevented if people controlled their exposure to UV. So, primarily, if you can avoid it, that's the best. Then work in the shade. Avoid outdoor work around the hours of solar noon. Check the UV index to see what sort of exposure there is on that day. Cover up. Wear sunglasses to stop UV exposure to the eye and make sure that they are certified as being UV protection. Also work in rotation. Take breaks in the shade, wear sun protection and check your skin for signs of UV damage. The No Time to Lose campaign on occupational cancer also covers solar radiation amongst other occupational uh, carcinogens. The campaign aims to raise awareness of significant health issues facing workers in the UK and internationally. It suggests some solutions on a UK scale to tackle the problem at a national level, but also that can be transposed internationally. 
The campaign offers free practical material to businesses and to employees to help them deliver effective prevention programs. The practical materials focus on five key carcinogens. That's asbestos, diesel engine exhaust, silica, shift work and solar radiation. These free practical resources can be downloaded from the IOSH No Time To Lose webpage. There are fact sheets, leaflets, posters, toolbox talks, pocket cards and other information that can be useful for people and businesses to get this message across. The new solar radiation resource have been developed to raise awareness of solar radiation at work. There are fact sheets, good practice case studies, real life stories, sun safety film to increase awareness, a myth buster quiz, toolbox talks, manager briefing sheets, pocket cards for workers, posters and infographics to make the information easily understood. Getting involved and in formal support. IOSH is encouraging businesses to endorse this campaign with a statement of support and use of the logo. Organisations that do will receive a supporters pack and we encourage them to spread the word within their company and their supply chain. Join more than 100 organisations and companies that have already given their support to this campaign. There are many companies that have given and organisations that have given their support to this campaign. And IOSH is also encouraging companies to pledge to take action and reduce exposure to occupational carcinogens using a six point action plan. Such organisations and companies will receive a certificate in recognition of their pledged actions and they will get recognition as a responsible business showing leadership on this issue. So your companies and your clients could join these forward thinking companies that are listed on this slide as just a sample of those that have already pledged to take action to reduce carcinogenic exposure in the workplace. So to find out more go to the web page which is www no time to lose .org uk. You can access free information, download or order free practical resources. You can ask our expert panel for advice, find out about events, support the campaign, pledge your commitment to tackling harmful exposures at work, get the latest news on occupational cancer and read our national action plan. This is a snapshot of the web page. And here you can download those free resources, you can get involved, you can endorse the campaign, you can pledge your support, you can ask the experts, you can watch introductory films about the issues and you can actually see real life case stories. And it's well worth a look at this web page. So thank you for listening and I hope you will get involved in the No Time To Lose campaign. Thank you.